This morning, outrage from U.S. officials after Russia carried out a missile test early Monday, firing an anti-satellite missile into space, obliterating one of its own satellites and creating a vast debris field that's now orbiting Earth. The test has so far generated over 1,500 pieces of track trackable orbitable debris and hundreds of thousands of pieces of smaller orbitable orbital debris that now threaten the interests of all nations. War is a tragic thing. It highlights perhaps the greatest representation of humanity's capacity for both evil and destruction. As we approach a more and more delicate situation here in the modern age and dance along the line of World War III, we enter into a new type of warfare forced upon us by the inevitable advancement of technology. In today's time, we must be on guard both on the surface of Earth, but also in the final frontier of violence, space. Welcome to my channel, TFC Tech, where we discuss fascinating and relevant topics surrounding science and technology. Today, we're going over the very real threat of warfare and danger from the far reaches of space, and over perhaps the most terrifying and dangerous weapons ever conceived, which now sit in the dark skies above, waiting to rain fire down on Earth. But before we get started, I know about 90% of you watching aren't subscribed, so hit the like button and the subscribe button, and let's get into it. It's October 4th, 1957, and the Soviets are hard at work to launch the first ever artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, to near-Earth orbit where it would shoot around the globe orbiting Earth every 96 minutes. On paper, the satellite was launched to correspond with the International Geophysical Year, a solar period that the International Council of Scientific Unions declared would be ideal for the launching of artificial satellites to study Earth and the solar system. However, to the United States, the launching of a machine into space that passes over the U.S. seven times a day and was capable of transmitting radio waves made the story sound a lot less convincing. What further bothered the U.S. is the fact that Sputnik weighed 83 kilograms and raised the dramatic concern that the Soviets now had the capabilities to launch nuclear warheads to the United States mainland. This launch of Sputnik would go on to inspire what would later be known as the space race and would propel space technology to what we see now. The dramatic achievements in space which occurred in recent weeks should have made clear to us all, as did the Sputnik in 1957, the impact of this adventure on the minds of men everywhere. Since early in my term, our efforts in space have been under review. With the advice of the Vice President, who is Chairman of the National Space Council, we have examined where we are strong and where we are not, where we may succeed and where we may not. Now it is time to take longer strides, time for a great new American enterprise, time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. With the explosion of space technology and the rapid deployment of satellites since the great space race, we have become incredibly dependent on the infrastructure floating above our heads. So with that being said, just how reliant on space infrastructure are we? The truth is, we rely on the constellations of satellites for everything such as the internet, communication, maps and navigation, and even the weather. While those technologies used to be luxuries, today they represent critical tools for the function of society. And what's worse, they represent perhaps our greatest vulnerability. In November of 2021, Russia performed a test of in-space warfare by using a missile to blow up one of their defunct Soviet-era satellites. Not only did this test represent a new, very real threat to the integrity of Earth's most important infrastructure, but it also left a dangerous cloud of space debris in its wake. In fact, on November 15th, the astronauts aboard the International Space Station were told to seek shelter in the docked spacecraft in case of catastrophic collision with the debris. While this incident raises grave warning signs, what concerns the world even more is that the American Defense Intelligence Agency now believes that China has revolutionary weapons capable of destroying domestic satellites. They believe the Chinese are in possession of direct energy weapons which would shoot microwaves that would fry and render enemy satellites useless. But their belief is grounded in reality. In fact, in 2006, China actually used one of these direct energy lasers to disable a U.S. satellite that was in orbit. The defense of and utilization of satellites has been on the minds of governments around the world lately and continues to ramp up as modern day tensions escalate. In fact, the reality that enemy nations can now target satellites at will is the exact reason that the United States has established its Space Force. 
At first, this idea was seen as ridiculous and even spawned a Netflix series made to mock it after President Trump announced its creation in 2019. But its role in defending and monitoring our satellite constellations is desperately vital and extremely important. As I said before, satellites represent an immensely important piece of infrastructure that is critical to the function of society. Its importance also extends to the battlefield. We can even actively see how with Elon Musk providing Starlink assistance to Ukraine during this conflict, how critically important the role of low orbit satellite internet technology can be for on the ground communication. While Russia has been busy at work to disable Ukraine's internet communications, Starlink has been an extremely useful piece of technology for the Ukrainian military to coordinate artillery strikes, keep communication up, and operate drones in the region. So where does this place us now? Well, with tensions rising in Eastern Europe and Russia, as well as continued escalations with the US and China over the sovereignty of Taiwan, the world could very well be plunged into World War III very soon. As terrifying and horrible as that would be for the world as a whole, it would likely be the showcase for a new terrifying weapon being developed by the United States military. The 1967 Outer Space Treaty bans the stationing of weapons of mass destruction WMDs, in space, prohibits military activities on celestial bodies, and details legally binding rules governing the peaceful exploration and use of space. However, as we have repeatedly seen during wartime, war crime treaties are typically not worth the paper they're printed on. While this treaty outlines the prohibition of nuclear weapons in space, there is a workaround that the US has found and has been developing. That weapon is Project Thor. Although the Treaty of 1967 prohibits the use of nuclear, chemical, or biological weapons from space, Project Thor works around that. Deployed from orbital satellites, these quote-unquote rods from God are non-nuclear 20-foot long tungsten rods which fall to Earth with the same destructive force as a nuclear bomb, just without the radioactive fallout. We can see a simulation of the destructive force of one of these systems in the Call of Duty Ghost video game, where one of these rods shreds the ground and leaves a large devastating blast. The system works by dropping a super-dense tungsten rod from orbit and allowing Earth's gravity to generate the incredible velocity. As the rod hits 10 times the speed of sound, it takes roughly 15 minutes for the rod to make its annihilating impact. As the tungsten does not fall under the nuclear, chemical, or biological weapons categories, this weapon successfully circumvents the Treaty of 1967. The reality is that one day these weapons could very well be used in a situation as grand as World War III. But as it stands so far, we have no declassified information to suggest that a Project Thor system is currently orbiting above our heads. Although it might just be a well-kept government secret. So with everything that we've talked about today, the prospect of war in space is very real and very terrifying. All of the luxuries we enjoy in a first world society rely on critical infrastructure in space and with tensions rising, they present very appealing targets for our adversaries. But that's going to wrap up our video today. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more from this channel. And I'll see you next time.